in actuality this lecture is not the importance of seeking knowledge or anything like that this lecture is as I mentioned in my first lecture dealing with Surah Al-Mu'minun some of the characteristics that Allah Azza mentioned in Surah Al-Mu'minun that will guarantee and secure a person being successful saving himself and his family from the hellfire so in the first lecture we dealt with those people who take care of the prayer and that was the first characteristic that was mentioned and the second characteristic that we're going to deal with is this one right here that you can see on the screen the believers are successful those who turn away from vain speech and the word for vain speech is al-lagu that's another one of those Arabic terms and an Arabic word that we should come to note and understand the scholars of Islam gave different interpretations for lagu and this is really important al-lagu is vain speech and all kind of speech that has no benefit to it speech that's going to be problematic for the person Yom al -Qiyama. so a level the worst type of level is a shirk billahi a shirk billahi for someone to say that Isa is the son of Allah for someone to say that Allah doesn't exist for someone to say that Ruzair is the son of Allah that's a level so the believers are those people who avoid speech like that because it's going to be a problem in the previous presentation and I have to say this in the previous presentation when we talk about ghosts and things like that and although we're joking around and we're being lighthearted we have to be lighthearted according to the religion just can't stretch out say anything the believers are those people who are successful who don't fall into a level. A level also means, like I told you, any and every action that doesn't bring benefit back to you from the ma'asi, whether it's from your calamity action. So a person who means ghiba, namima, al kedib, people who curse, swear, all of that is a level, all of that. And a level also because the Prophet used the word Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the authentic hadith he mentioned for Salatul Jum'ah Salatul Jum'ah Man qala yawm al-Jum'ati wal-Imam yakhtub ansad faqad lagha anyone who while the Imam is talking on the day of al-Jum'ah if he says to someone else be quiet then that person may level so what about the person who is talking people who at the Juma, for an example they look at their mobile phones at Juma. they do things that compromise the Juma. all of that is a level you see this word right here on the on the on the um, screen this is important now this word is an Arabic word al-intifada al-intifada that word became famous and is still famous in the Muslim world because it means uprising is synonymous with the Palestinian uprising now, I need you guys to pay attention to what I want to say right now and I need you to lock into what I'm about to share with you it's important one of the companions his name is Abdullah ibn Mughaffal radiallahu anhu he passed by a man the man was plucking rocks passing the time away he was just plucking rocks when the companion saw him doing that thing the companion were not like us we are people who we can see something that's wrong and we know it's wrong and we're free to tell people don't do that because we want everybody to like us I have to tell you when we make these films and we do these things we have to keep it Islamic I can't pretend to play Musa I can't pretend to play the Shaitan I can't pretend to play a drug dealer I can't pretend to play that I'm a jinn I'm a ghost so this companion said to this man hey 
Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, don't pluck rocks like that because when you pluck rocks, it won't help you to hunt. You can't hunt a deer, a rabbit. You can't kill something with the rock. Toyota Corolla 78249 is blocking people in the parking lot. Dada block rain is a kafka garia skala 78249. So the Prophet told the people don't pluck rocks because you can't hunt by plucking rocks. It won't hurt the enemy. We want to go and fight people. You can't pluck rocks. They have guns, they have tanks. He said, and if you pluck rocks, you're going to knock someone's eye out or you may, break his, you may break his tooth. So it's not permissible to sit down and to pluck rocks because it brings no benefit. It's lago. The point that I want to make here is, you know our Palestinian brothers right now and our sisters for many years, they are throwing rocks at tanks. Tanks. The Yahoo, they have tanks. And the young people from Palestine in the uprising, they're throwing rocks. And a lot of times when we don't know this religion, when we don't understand the fiqh of al Islam, the masalih and the mafasid, when we're emotional people, many Muslims will endorse throwing rocks at tanks. Throwing rocks at tanks is level. Someone may say, Someone may say, yeah, but they don't have anything else but rocks, so you have to fight with just the rocks. That's not the fiqh of Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran, wala taqtulu an fusukum, in Allah kana bikum rahima. Don't kill yourselves. Allah was ever merciful to you. Wala tulku bi aidikum min tahluka. Don't cause yourselves to destroy your own selves with your own hands. So if we can imagine, we're one tribe, we're one tribe. We have a leader from our tribe. If all we have at our disposal is rocks to protect ourselves and the enemy has tanks and they have a lot of power that clearly they're going to decimate us. Al Islam doesn't condone and it doesn't endorse that emotional thing about just standing and throw rocks. And that's why I was telling you people yesterday, yesterday, in the beginning of Islam, the Muslims had to be patient. They had to turn the other cheek. They had to eat humble pie. They had to bite the bullet until they got power and they were able to push back. So the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is we do not and we cannot make our decisions in Islam based upon emotions only. Emotions by themselves are going to get us in trouble. Our decisions have to be guided by the delil and the text. We go on to the next point here. One of the types of level, and this is what my talk is all about, especially to you parents, husband, wives, mother and fathers. One of the types of level is complaining. Complaining. But not just complaining but complaining unnecessarily. You have to pay attention to this. Complaining unnecessarily. That wife, that all she does is complain. That mother, that father, all they do is complain. Whatever the kid does, he didn't do it good enough. The mother's still gonna say, you're a bum. You're never gonna amount to anything. The father kills the spirit of the kid. No matter what he does, he can't get a break, can't get a slap on the back where it said to him Santa you did good so here we're talking about complaining unnecessarily now if you are wronged you have the right to complain we're not talking about that you see the woman here Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran قَدْ سَمِي اللَّهُ قَوْلُ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Allah hears the complaint of the woman, Ya Muhammad, she came to you to complain about her husband. Surah Al-Mujadila. There was a lady, her husband was oppressing her. Her husband said, you're like the back of my mother. I don't want to deal with you anymore. He didn't divorce her, 
but he's not giving her haqq in, 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 in the zawaj, in the nikah. He said, you're like my mother, what they do in jahiliya. So that lady went to the Prophet and complained, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a complaint that's permissible. The lady is married to a husband, and he is a valim. He's a fasiq. He's a mujrim. He's not praying. He's doing crazy stuff, beating her up. He's going outside of the house, having relationships. That lady got a right to complain. She can complain to a wali, to the imam. She can complain to people who want to protect her. And I say this clearly without biting my tongue. Muslims should not go to the police against other Muslims. We should try to keep that problem indoor. We should try to handle it amongst ourselves. But there are some people from our community, they only understand one language. And that is, if you go to the police, that's when you're going to get your haq. Now the Muslim should try not to go to the police on the Muslim. But if there is a Muslim that is oppressing you, it's permissible to go to the police. I'm not telling you to do that. You have to make that decision. But don't be of those people who think, who think you have to suffer in silence. The woman has the right to complain. You see on the board, Somalians, Eritreans, they have the right to complain with what Ethiopia does taking the land that belongs to us, killing people, Palestinians, Iraqis, Syrians, Syrian children haven't gone to school for two years. Their land is destroyed. They have the right to complain to the whole world. They have a right to complain. African Americans, we have a right to complain that America stands on top of a soapbox and screams democracy and human rights. And as the brother said in his spoken word before me, they're still shooting us in the street since I've been here. I'm not afraid in the UK because the police don't carry guns. They don't carry guns. But now that I'm here, when I'm driving in a car, anytime I hear the police siren, I'm on alert because I know they can stop any one of us. And because your license plate is hanging, your back lighting working, you didn't bring your light, you didn't bring your license with you, they blast you. So we have a right to complain and say to America, get out of here with all of that rhetoric, democracy, equal rights. I'm not talking about that kind of complaining. I'm talking about the lahu, the person who complains unnecessarily. Which brings us to the next point. We talk about the belief that They turn away from lahu. He wants to make riba, ain't got time for that. They want to lie, ain't got time for that. They want to talk about what's not right, ain't got time for that. We're talking about that. Save yourselves and your family from what is lago. Unnecessarily complaining is from lago. As it relates to lago, a few things we got to understand. A lago and complaining unnecessarily is from the fitra. Everybody here, without an exception, will unnecessarily complain, without an exception. And if you pay attention after this talk, just pay close attention to everybody who talks to you. You're going to see people are complaining unnecessarily. It's just something that is from the fitra. But we have a religious responsibility to push it back. This is not from the makaram and akhlaq. This is from the jihad and the trials that we have to deal with. And I give you an example right now with the issue of Surat al-Ma'arij, Surat al-Fajr, many ayat and ahadith. Like Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Inna l-insana khuliqa hulu'an idha masuhu shar jazu'an wa masuhu khair manu'a Mankind, they have been created and they've been created in haste. They want everything yesterday. Especially young people. They want it very quickly. If evil touches him, he'll complain. And if good touches him, he doesn't want to give. So when he doesn't have, he'll complain about what he doesn't have. But when Allah gives him something, he'll start to complain. When Allah gives him something, he won't give. In Surah Al-Fajr, the ayah said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا أَكْرَمُهُ رَبُّهُ وَنَعَمَ If this happens, he says, Rabbi Akraman. My Lord, he, he blessed me. He gave me this, he gave me this, he gave me that. But then the next ayah showed his nature. 
واما اذا اذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي اهانا but if Allah takes things away from him, he starts to complain. So that goes to show the nature of Bani Adam. It's in your fitrah. Listen to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that was collected by the Imam Ahmed under the authority of that tremendous, illustrious companion. Her name is Khawla bint Qais, radwanallahi alayhi. She said that the Prophet said about the sons and daughters of Adam, in Ibn Adam, in asabahu al-bard qala has. وَإِنْ أَصَابُ الْحَرْ قَالَ حَسْ The son of Adam is the one who If it's hot, he'll say Has, always oh, hot And if it's cold, he'll say Always oh, cold He'll never be happy, he'll never be satisfied If it's cold, he'll say Always oh, cold If it's hot, he'll say Always oh, hot And he won't have sober on this situation now that's considered to be unnecessarily complaining because you just have to deal with the weather. There's nothing you can do about it. So why complain about it? It's cold, it's cold, it's hot, it's hot. Some people are like that with issues concerning food, for an example. They always complain. If the wife cooks food, the husband is never satisfied. It has too much salt. It's too hot. It's too cold. It's too spicy. Abu Huraira described the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ Sallam لَا يَشْتَكِي كَانَ لَا يَشْتَكِي مِنَ الطَّعَامِ He used to never complain about food. If he liked it, he ate it. If he didn't like it, he didn't eat it. Now that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean myself, myself. I'm not a big coffee drinker. I'm not a big tea drinker. When I mix with the community here, you get one cup of coffee, a little cup of tea it has 10 spoons of sugar in it. And for me, I'm going to have to say, hey, hey, hey. I'm not complaining, but I don't want 10 spoons of sugar so that I don't keep wasting the tea because I'm not used to that. Now, you have every right to say, I don't like it like this. I don't like it like that. But what we're talking about is the wife, the mother. She did everything in her ability to present you with something that's nice. And the person comes and says, I don't like that. I don't want that. Because it's not perfect for that individual. Rasulullah sallallahu if he liked it, he ate it. If he didn't like it, he didn't eat it. So don't be of those people who, when people do ihsan to you, and they give you good, she brought you this. He purchased that for you. Gave this as a gift. But it's not enough, so you complain. Unnecessarily. Now we come to the issue of another problem with complaining. You can see this is written in Sumani, so there's people from amongst you will definitely be with me. But complaining is from the many characteristics that are in the Quran that describe the Jews, the Yahud. Every single day when we pray, today, we ask Allah to protect us and not make us like the Yahud or the Nasara. In Surah Al Fatiha, the greatest surah of the Quran, that we don't consider it. We don't consider the meanings of Surah Al-Fatiha. From the lessons of Surah Al-Fatiha, don't make us of the people who are maqdubi alayhim, and don't make us of the people who are dalim. The Yahud are those who Allah is angry with for the many characteristics that have been mentioned about them in the Quran. What did they do? From their characteristics, yuharrifun al-kalima al they change the words from their proper place. Instead of saying that what should be said, they'll mess around with the words. They killed the prophets and the messengers. They were hard-hearted. They were arrogant. From their, from their characteristics in the Quran is the issue that they used to complain. There is a story in the Quran after Allah caused Musa to save Bani Israel and Musa went and single-handedly took them from Egypt. Fir'aun was a volum. He would do all kind of craziness. If you can imagine this, because it's a big problem. My wife is in the audience, your mother, your wife, your sister, your relatives in the audience. Fir'aun took Bani Israel and he used to kill their sons. The firstborn, they would kill him. And Fir'aun will leave their women folk alive. He will leave the women folk alive so that he, along with his soldiers, can do with them what they wanted to do with them. 
and you couldn't do anything about it. Couldn't do anything about it. Allah sent Musa, Musa, by Allah's permission, single-handedly took those people from bondage and he took them through the Red Sea, a miracle. And when they were on the other side and Allah destroyed Fir'aun, Bani Israel right away started making problems. In Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 61, is the story when Allah Ta'ala mentioned, وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَن نَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامٍ وَاحِدًا فَدْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُخْرِجْ لَنَا مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ بَقْلِهَا وَقِثَّائِهَا وَفُومِهَا وَعَدَسِهَا وَبَصْرِهَا Remember, Bani Israel, when Musa saved you from that drama, and you were going in the promised land, trying to get to Beit al maqdis You were on your way in the desert. Like this brother again, the one who did the spoken word. Some people from Somalia found themselves in the refugee camp in Kenya. I know Somali people in the UK who told me about how they were leaving Somalia when the war was happening, and they were walking for three months. That happened to Beni Israel. They were walking from Egypt, trying to look for Beit al maqdis in the desert. And they have Musa with them, leading the way. So Allah blessed them with two things that they can eat. They can eat a bird called Salwa, like a girl. Her name is Salwa. It's a nice bird. It tastes better than chicken, turkey. It's a nice bird. But that's all they can eat, and they can eat manna. It was this thing that grew out the earth. But that was all they can eat. They got tired. They say, hey, Musa, we can't keep eating the same thing all the time. Make dua to your Lord, not our Lord. Make dua to your Lord. Ask your Lord to give us the good things from the earth. Give us the lentils, the cucumbers, the onions. Give us the wheat. Give us the barley. That ayat, that story, is not a story about the diet and the dietary habits of Ben Israel. That story is telling us about how the Yehud think and how they are. After Musa saved them, they couldn't be patient. They couldn't be patient with just keep eating these two types of food until you reach where you're going. They started giving Musa a hard time. They started to complain, to complain. So complaining, the Muslim that has it, reading, but you're one of those people who always complain, you're not understanding that ayah. Complaining is from the sifat al-Yuhudiyah that are not good. So it should be avoided. After that, Akhwani, another problem <laughs> as it relates to complaining are many, but we don't have time. And I'm going to cut this short, inshallah. But as it relates to complaining, a lot of things can be mentioned. But now we want to get to the solution. How do we solve the problem? We solve the problem about getting this characteristic off of us and out of us, those of us who have it, and everybody has it. And again, I challenge you in a nice way. Just listen and pay attention to the person who's going to talk to you right after this lecture. Before the end of the night, we're going to sit with each other and we're going to start talking about things and we're going to be complaining about things that, why are you complaining? Another thing about complaining is, a lot of times when you complain, when you complain, you're telling people about your personal lives and they can't do anything about it. All you're doing is washing your dirty laundry in public. And no one does that. No one who has any sense. So how do we solve the problem? We follow the minhaj of the NBA in the Quran. Like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said about the Nabi from his sunnah, if anything came to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he liked, if anything happened to him that he liked, anything, like your child graduates, your child, you had a baby, your relative had a baby, your son got married, you got a new car, anything that happened positive to him. His sunnah was to say, Alhamdulillah ladhi bi ni'matihi tatimu as-salihat. Anything good happened to him. That hadith is in the mustadrak of al-imam hakim, our mother Aisha. She narrated that hadith. 
if anything happened good to the Prophet وسلم, anything that he was happy with his dua was Alhamdulillah ladhi bi ni'matihi tatammu as-salihat she said in the same hadith but if something bad happened to him at the battle of Badr or the battle of Uhud he lost his uncle Hamza radiyallahu anhu if something happened to him that was bad and negative complain she said that he would say alhamdulillah ala kulli hal this is important dua you know most of us we know inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun we all know la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah one of those duas that the muslim has to have is this dua from the sunnah when something good happened to him he prays allah alhamdulillah الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات. but if something bad happened to him, he would say, الحمد لله على كل حال. don't be of those people who, when something bad happens, you curse people or you may even curse Allah. that's what the kafir Quraysh used to do. if a catastrophe happened, he got his arm cut off, anything. They would curse the time. They would curse the time because they felt that the time brought them the misfortune, the asr, the, the what, the, the time. So the Prophet told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La tasubbu dahar, finnallaha huwa dahar, yuqallibu layla wa nahar. Don't curse the time. He said, Allah is the time. Allah changes the night to the day and the day to the night. So, for an example, on this day, he lost his arm. So he says, curse be upon time. That person is indirectly cursing Allah. So don't say that. But instead say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. When things happen. You have a problem with your husband. He's a tough character to deal with. Don't sit around with other women talking about, my husband did this, my husband did that, my husband did that. My wife did this, my wife did that. My husband. Don't be like those people. Don't be like those people. You get on the local bus, the bus outside. The person takes the public transportation ship. The bus driver is a non-Muslim. He's just trying to be nice. He's just trying to be nice. The Muslim lady gets on the bus. He's just trying to be nice. He says to the lady, good morning, madam. Good morning. And how are you doing today? She says, oh, my husband did this, and my kids did that, and we don't have any money, and I got to send money back home, and oh, and... He said, hey, I was just saying good morning. That's why I ain't really trying to get all in your business. But some people are like that. They don't even know the person and they just tell them their business. That's not from what the Nabi Wasallam encouraged the people to do. So in order to solve the problem, the minhaj of the Anbiya, not just Rasulullah, there's another Nabi, and that's Yaqub in Surah Yusuf. If you recall the story of Surah Yusuf, when Yusuf wanted to keep his brother Benjamin back, he came up with an idea that he's going to take the cup of the king and put it in the saddle of Benjamin. And then he was going to tell the people he stole it so he has to stay back. So when he did that, he said, okay, we found it with Benjamin, he has to stay back. So the brothers of Yusuf went back to their father Yaqub and they told Yaqub, your son stole. That's why he's back in Egypt, because he stole something. Yaqub knows his son. It's like us. I should know my wife. You should know your son. You should know your friend. When people come and make claims that they did this, they did that, don't be too quick to believe what people are saying when they don't bring proofs because we have to support each other. Some people of the way, if you say something about someone who's close to him, they'll believe it right away, as opposed to having loyalty to him. Yaqub knew his son, Benjamin. So when they said, your son, Benjamin, he stole something, so they kept it, they kept him, they kept him back. Yaqub said to him, Bal sawwalat lakum anfusukum amra fa sabrun jameel. Sabrun jameel. This is a word in the Quran, guys, that we have to appreciate and understand. If you don't get anything else from me while we've been here in these last two days, go away with understanding this part of the Quran. 
Yusuf said, no, I don't believe my son sold. I don't believe that my son stole anything. This is something that you people made up. Yourselves made it up, but for me, I'm going to have sabr jameel. What is sabr jameel in the Quran? There are different types of sabr. This past Ramadan in the UK, we fasted 18 and a half hours. That's not sabr jameel. It's sabr, but it's not beautiful sabr, sabr jameel. Sabr jameel is what Yaqub said later on in the surah. He said, as Allah said, قَالْ إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ he said, verily, I'm going to complain about my sorrow and I'm going to complain about my sadness only to Allah. And I know from Allah what you don't know. So sabr jameel, ikhwani, sabr jameel, what is it? It is when a person has a problem and that problem that he has, he only complains to Allah about that problem. He can go and tell other people to get it off of his chest to lighten his load but he doesn't do that because he doesn't want to expose his wife she doesn't want to expose the husband they don't want to expose people who are close to them and the people who they may tell this to can't help this to anyway so sabr jameel is when something happens to you whatever it is if it's something that people can't help you with and you bear it patiently and you complain only to Allah you make dua to Allah you cry to Allah. When you make salat, you ask Allah to help you. People don't even know what's going on. It's between you and Allah. That's sabr jameel. And that's the highest level of sabr in Al-Islam. So as it relates to this issue, saving ourselves and our families from the hellfire, one of the things that we're responsible for doing is getting the grip on this issue of al lagu And lagu is Allah. Lagu, as it was written, is playing with the PlayStation, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours at a time. It's a waste of time. Lago, lago, lago is surfing the net, going on Facebook three, four, five hours at a time, and it's bringing you no benefit. All of that is lago. But the lago that we want to deal with is in contrast to what the Prophet said when he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inni bu'ithu li utamma al akhlaq. I've been sent to perfect the good character. So good character is having sabr, and good character is not being an individual who, when you sit around with people, all you do is complain. So get a grip on that. And if you're a mother or if you're a father and you have this characteristic as it relates to your child, this is one of the ways that I mentioned it will kill and suffocate and destroy the spirit of your child. If you never, ever, 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 ever say, and you never acknowledge that your child has accomplished something. And this is why the Salaf, those companions, when they memorized Surah Al-Baqarah, they would slaughter a camel out of celebration. So when our child, he finishes Juz Amma, he finished some part of the Quran, we're going to celebrate, we're going to have a party like here today. Some of these kids are going to get certificates for the Quran. They're going to get trophies for basketball and things like that. This is the community acknowledging and encouraging, telling the kids, keep going, keep doing that. But for the mother or the father, the husband or the wife, the human being, who all he says is, you this, you that, never, it's never good, it's always dark, the glass is always half empty. You give him a glass, is half full or half empty? The positive person says, Alhamdulillah, that glass is half full. The complainer says, Why are you giving me the glass is half empty? Why are you giving me the glass is half empty? So this is from the level that is not permissible. And this is what we wanted to present to you, brothers. And I think the last uh, thing is for anyone who wants to see those two dua written, although I think you know the one in red, anytime something happens to you, that you don't like, just say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. But don't say it like this though, don't say it like this. If someone comes and they see that you look sad, 
They say, yo, you all right? Is everything all right? And you go like this. Alhamdulillah, kulli hal. Because that's complaining. Although you're saying the dua, you have to say it with conviction. Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. My, my wife lost a baby. That, oh man, that's a big one. My wife was pregnant nine months. She lost a baby. Quote, hey, what happened? Everything is okay? Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. Allah, he was the one who decreed that thing. As for, she lost a baby. Why it always happened to me? I would, don't be like that. Don't be like that. That's from the level that is not permissible. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa shadu wa la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.